see me up now and the people wanna talk I see the more you're successful, the more that they walk And the more you get reaping, they all wanna stalk And the more you get treatment, they want in the spot Like tell me you think that I'm dumb, do you think if I wasn't so good She would hop on the song, like tell me the truth If I wasn't this big, do you really think that she put me on the clock And be honest, the reason you hopped on a vid with the kid was Cause I had some music to bop And be honest, the reason you want to be part of the process Is you can see me at the top Chronex, what's good, bro? I just want to uh, welcome you to the podcast. Hey, man, I'm happy to be here. I'm doing great, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I appreciate that, bro. Um, So first thing I want to say is uh, I discovered you from objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. Um, You dropped that this year. Um, yeah. First thing I want to ask you is just let everybody know where you're from and how it was growing up in the area you're in. Okay, so... um. So I'm from Titusville, Florida. It's like a smaller town in Florida. It's like an hour away from Orlando. Um, I say I had a pretty good life growing up. I'm not going to say I grew, grew up in a struggle. I'm not going to lie or nothing. You know, I grew up with nice parents, you know, good good living. But, you know, the school I went to was, you know, it had its fair share of those kids who, you know, did grow up, you know. There was a side of town that was, you know, that the hood area. And then there was a side of town that was, like, more rich, you know what I'm saying? So it was kind of like a mixed bag. And um, being that close to Orlando and um, growing up in your household and, like, from where you started as younger, going up to middle school, high school, what were you hearing in that area at the time, musically? Um, Honestly, I didn't hear a whole lot of artists in my area until about high school. Um, and actually, um, I'm friends with, like, a couple of those artists. Some of them, you know, I still I don't talk to you know, just because, like, I don't know him personally, but I'm actually friends with a couple of them, and I've made a couple songs with a couple of them in the area of Titusville, so. Yeah, so yeah. when you're a child, right, what, what are you hearing in your, like, playing in your household or around you, and then what are you listening to personally, like, when you get control of the ox chord? Um, as a kid, you know, I grew up on that older rap, you know, my, my dad, you know, he, that's what he listened to, he listened to a lot of Pac, you know, a lot of, he came from, from uh Tennessee so he listened to a lot of you know Tennessee rappers and then yeah and then my mom she was more she listened to more like singing stuff I listened to a lot of Michael Jackson too growing up but you know and that's you know I try to incorporate a little bit of singing in my music I'm not the best I, I don't practice on singing I, I took a band class from middle school to my senior year of high school so and my my band teacher he kind of had us singing a little bit so I kind of have, like, I know key and stuff like that. Like, I know how to be in tune, but, like, I don't know how to sing, you know what I'm saying? So I'm still a still a basic when it comes to that. But when I get control of the ox, I mean, I really try to play anything, like, as far as it goes, like, as far as rap. I'm still trying to broaden my horizons. Like, I'm trying to start listening to other genres. Um, I don't really know any particular artists that I guess I would play majorly I just like it's old new I guess I would say for older um my because I have two dads because you know my mom and my dad got divorced and I live with my mom and my stepdad so my stepdad he listens to like those Memphis rappers you know from Tennessee but my dad he's from Texas so I grew up listening to a lot of you know Zero um you know uh Nipsey Hussle the game, you know, stuff like that, you know, uh, it wasn't a big crit, you know, I, I grew up listening to a lot of that. So I do listen to a lot of those artists a little bit, but, you know, I do listen to a lot of newer artists like Autumn, you know, Yeet, stuff like that. I kind of like that, that kind of vibe, you know, from the newer area. And I also listen to a lot of underground artists, you know, you know, I try to, I try to make sure I listen to a lot of that to kind of incorporate that in my music a little bit, I guess. Yeah. You sound like you have a ride, a uh, wide range of, you know, what you're intaking and especially like, you know, growing up hearing a lot of Michael Jackson, hearing a lot of different kinds of music besides rap. I think that helps yeah. artists a lot too in their own creativity. Yeah. So um, how old were you when you 
first had the idea in your head, like, hey, maybe I want to start making my own music? Um, so funny story, uh, actually when COVID hit, I was like really bored and the way I went, I had started up, like I wanted to start doing music as like a joke. Like I didn't take it seriously at all, but I remember, um, whole lot of red was like supposed to drop, I guess during that time that I was thinking about making music. So I just made like a crappy, like pretend like whole lot of red tape you know it, it was so bad it's still on soundcloud if anybody wants to listen to that but um yeah it was it was it was absolute garbage but and i just kept making you know kind of trash music for like a little bit longer and then there were people you know at my school who i showed it to and they were like i feel like if you actually tried you'd be pretty good so this year i thought about you know kind of taking it more seriously and i've gotten a lot of positive results. Of course, you know, there's always criticism and, you know, I, I love criticism, you know, that's what makes people better. So, you know, I take that criticism and try to make it, you know, try to form it to make me better, you know, so that's how I feel. Yeah. So how old, how old are you exactly when you like, <clears throat> cause there's a difference, right? Like say you yeah. that whole lot of red thing you did and like you were just fucking around with it. Mm -hmm. When did you get serious? Like how old are you? And then you were like, okay, like, I want to do it seriously and drop it online for people to enjoy. Uh, last year. So when I was about sev 17, like halfway, um, pretty much like halfway through my senior year is when I was like, and I'm 18 right now. So it's only, it hasn't been that long, but I just turned 18 actually like a couple months ago. So um, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, late last year was when I was like, all right, let me try and kind of take it more serious. And it wasn't until, um, I say about March this year that I was like, let me actually like super like, you know, like let me try to make the best I can type of stuff. Yeah. So yeah. so let's talk about your project. Uh, objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. Yeah. First of all, love, love it. I've always had oh, that idea. Thing. Like if I ever made music, I always love that fan in the window. I thought it was dope. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> great title. I love it. Um, Thank you. Talk to me about your process of making the tape um did you kind of go into it like with an idea like i wanted people to listen to it from start to finish straight through or was it kind of just like your best songs you put together um so i kind of thought of it as like me kind of telling my mental like what what was all in my brain you know just kind of throwing it out in like a form of you know music and um i really kind of wanted like a uh, I had a I had an idea. I had the idea of the word respect. And that just that word alone was kind of my thought process that helped me branch out into, you know, knowing what I wanted to do for each song, you know, how I wanted to make each song, you know, how I wanted to show off, you know, my creativity, because, you know, that was that was my main goal. And um, how, what were your, what was your feelings behind it before you released it? Like, were you nervous for people to check out something that you put good effort into or, or were you just like throw it out there or, and how did you feel like when people started hitting you up about it? Um, I was definitely nervous, but um, I felt that like, I truly like emptied like my, you know, my creativity and my emotions into the project. So I was like, you know, whether it gets good, you know, good ratings by people or bad ratings by people, I know, you know, I'm trying something new. Cause I haven't tried that type of like, you know, style before in my music, you know, but also I, I thought myself personally, I feel like all of the tracks are perfect. Like in my, in my standards from what I was capable of at that time frame. So I felt like it was perfect. And I actually got a couple of people um, who said like, you know, well, this is like really good. You know, a lot of people hit me up saying, well, you know, I like such and such song, you know, this song, that song. And I was like, Oh wow. You know, so that was good too, you know, kind of hearing positive feedback from the community as well. Yeah, how long did it take you to fully make the tape, would you say? I'd say about three months, three, four months, I'd say. Yeah, that's a good amount of time to uh, to put a tape like you did together. Um, who would you say are some of your influences, music influences, like as you go, like your approach to making music? Um, actually, um, my, the person who really got me into making, uh, music in general was this, is this underground rapper. His name's Skype. 
uh, I made a couple of songs with him. I think I deleted one. I'm going to remake it because I just didn't like the way it sounded. But um, he's actually the first underground artist I listened to on SoundCloud. And he was the one who kind of was like, oh, OK, let me see if I can, you know, kind of do this, you know, because I like the way, you know, nowadays he has like more of like a singy vibe to him. But like, you know, in the past, he had like an aggressive rap style. So I, I really I really messed with both both of those so that's one um i guess who else let's see um hmm, that's a great question i'm gonna try and think who was it i i'm not gonna lie oh yeah yeah, yeah. juice world i'm not gonna lie I, I listened to a lot of juice world when around that time you know when he's uh, an artist I, yeah when uh what was that album called uh death race for love when that came out that awesome. was kind of one of the ones yeah that was one of the ones i was like oh yeah i i kind of want to kind of make something like this you know express my feelings how he does so yeah all right rest in peace by the way yeah talk about putting your feelings uh into an album and then like because some artists say that you know it helps them you know that's their form of therapy that help you know it uh really helps them you know move forward with their life how does it feel like putting that kind of energy out to other people though like because some of that shit's personal you know yeah um for me it feels like a weight is almost kind of lifted off my back because i'm you know sharing my like you know how i feel you know my you know my personal stuff you know my personal information you know a lot of those songs i have you know i talk about you know stuff that's happened with me so you know it's like you know, I'm giving away that part of me. So it's like, you know, it's nice to hear when people like really mess with the song, like Tragedy, for instance, that you said was a good song. That was actually, you know, like it had it had meaning to it. It had I wrote it about somebody, you know, I wrote it about something. So, you know, it's just when I hear positive feedback, you know, from like emptying my heart out, you know, and I think for me, it's not just like about the what I'm trying to say. it's not just about like, I guess. Um, like just a weight lifted off me, but it's also like, um, it makes me feel better, I guess, because uh, a while ago, you know, like when I was younger, I used to just kind of like contain all my stuff, you know, like inside a bubble. And like, yeah. I didn't really have a way to like disperse, because I'm not the type of person to like, get really angry and punch a wall or something. I just kind of just like, you know, keep it contained. And, you know, I find it, I feel like music is really a way for me to help like, release it, you know, release my anger, my stress, you know, so it really keeps me up early in the morning because, you know, it really, it's, it's like you said, you know, before with the therapy thing, you know, it's kind of like my therapy in a way. So, yeah. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great answer, bro. Um, What do you think you've learned um, just since you dropped the first tape to now? Like. um, Definitely that I still have work to do, you know, um, you can always get better. You can always improve. Um, but also that I probably have to give myself a little bit more credit. I'm, they always say you're your own harshest critic, but I'm very like hard on myself a lot of the time. Like, you know, even though I said, you know, I think all of those songs are perfect. And that is true. As far as the album goes, you know, songs before in the past, I'm always like, you know, oh, I could have done this better. Oh, I could have done this better. I'm always like really nitpicky on myself. So I guess that, you know, kind of being more like, hey, you know, you know you're right, you know this could have been better, but, you know, give yourself a little bit more grace. This is still a good song, you know, so. That would be yeah. Awesome. What would you say for you personally, what do you think like you as an artist need most to take your career to the next level? Hmm. That's a great question. Um, visibility, but that's, that's all. I think if I branch out more and the more genres, I was thinking about like, you know, steeping into like, rock music like trying to make like rock more rock music um i think that'd be a good genre to go in i know a lot of rappers are you know trying to go into rock music but i feel like like alternative like more, yeah yeah yeah, more alternative type stuff and uh yeah i don't know i just feel like you know a lot of a lot of bigger name people just get known off like tiktok and stuff so just making sure i just stay up to date with like you know posting and stuff like that you know, just making sure, you know, because it's going to take a while, you know, just to like grow. But, yeah. you know, who knows one day, you know, a TikTok, you know, one of my songs might get popping on TikTok and that might push me through that algorithm, you know, because that's what's popping. Yeah, I like the way you answered that, because like 
you are relatively new, you know, to yeah. making music, dropping, just as like an artist and a brand and yourself, like you're new to this. So I like your answer because you're not like, you're in reality. You know what I mean? You're not like, oh, like, but, you know, like, I just need like this little thing. Like it takes work and it, I think yeah. social media has people, you know, it gives the wrong idea sometimes because you only see people's success. Mm -hmm. That's true. So I ask everybody this that comes on the podcast, no matter how famous the art or producer is, how underground, um, who would be your three dream features of any artist ever, dead or alive? Um, Three dream features? Oh, man. Uh, yeah, dead or alive. Dead or alive, okay. Uh, Drake? Um, I'm not called X, X, uh, XXX, Tentacion. Uh, he would have, that would have been great. Yeah. He's, yeah. Him. And then, ooh, Pink Panthress. Yeah. That's my favorite wow. female. Yeah. No say. one's ever said that so far. <laughs> yeah. She my dog. Yeah. Shout out Pink Panthress. Yeah. That, that's dope. So Drake, XX, Tentacion, and him. Um, yeah, those, that's three great answers, bro. Um, what can any of your fans expect next or people that are going to see this and check you out? Like, what do you have coming next in like, let's say the next few months? Um, in the next few months, I have, um, a couple singles being cooked up. I'm working on some more features, um, and probably another tape coming soon within the, this year or possibly early next year. So yeah, I'm just, you know, the grind, you know, I'm trying to work as hard as I can, you know, get up to the top. So you know grind yeah no doubt um what's your view on because obviously you're fully independent what's your view on um signing to a label or a distribution deal um i'm kind of iffy with that because like i hear like you know the bad stuff that comes with signing to a label and stuff but like you know um big name people but at the same time you know if it's like a big like um, let's just, you know, say like Cactus Jack or something wanted to sign me. I, I would be more inclined to sign with like something like that versus, you know, some like smaller name label that's like, you know, just only after me for my cloud and fame, you know, stuff like that. You know, and then just like, you know, when something happens to me and I don't make that, you know, all that crap, you know, they just throw me out to dry, you know. So Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Um hold on one second, I'll edit that out. This bitch is going crazy next door. <laughs> no, you good. No, nah, but yeah, I'll just edit that part out. Um, so let everybody know where they could find your music at. Um, like if you just want to spell out your artist name and then let them know what okay. platforms and everything you're on. All right. So my artist name is Cronax. That's C R O N A X. And you can find me on all platforms, Apple Music, Spotify, uh, YouTube. Uh, anywhere else you um listen to music on but i'm also on soundcloud i post um kind of um easier made songs on my soundcloud i don't post like as like i post the better stuff on my all platforms but my soundcloud i use it for like the songs that i think sound good but aren't like good enough to go on all platforms so, yeah what yeah. what soundcloud no you're good oh and the soundcloud is the same thing cronax c-r-o-n-a-x yeah yeah, I'm interested in you saying that. Um, like you dropped some of your shit on SoundCloud, but you don't think it's good enough to go on the other platforms. Um, what's what do you think the point of releasing that music is then? Um, just more experience. Yeah, it, just yeah. like you know, just you know, if I feel like because I'm always I'm always eager to make more music, but if I feel something is good, but I don't feel it's like good enough to like you know, be shared across like all those other platforms. I don't want to, you know, put something up that I don't feel is, you know, worth, you know, well, not, I, yeah, kind of worth putting up on there. Plus also a lot of the times I don't buy beats um, that I put on SoundCloud. So there's, you know, there's certain, um, you know, all the beats on YouTube, like I'll use YouTube beats sometimes. And those beats that I don't buy, I'll just put them on SoundCloud since, you know, they say you can, use it free on SoundCloud because you don't get any money. So yeah, that's dope. And I also think it's like kind of like maybe that's like a hidden gem kind of thing too. Cause you, cause instead of like, you know, holding on to all your shit and the shit you don't think like you could still give your fans music that way. Like you're, yeah, I wouldn't call it like a throwaway, but you know what I mean? Like, 
<laughs> yeah, for sure. Say like my throwaway songs. Oh, they're on SoundCloud. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Um, and I think fans of yours would enjoy that because either way, that's another chance to like hear what you're working on. Mm -hmm. You're right. Yeah, no doubt. Um, yeah. Before we get out of here, bro, if there's anything you'd like to say, or you know, the mic's yours, and um, yeah, just again, just let everybody know uh how to spell your artist name so they don't mess it up. All right, bet, bet, bet. Um, my artist name one more time is Cronax, C R O N A X. And you know, a word to the people, you know, if you want to be an artist, man, you know, keep doing it, keep grinding. You know, you're gonna, you know, you know, success comes in many ways. You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, you make it mainstream. It doesn't have to be, you know, all this craziness. Success to you could be, you know, just living a normal life, doing what you want to do, you know, as a passion. So I just say, you know, if you want to do something, just do it. You know, I'm here. I'm trying to my goal is to make it up to the top, up to mainstream. But, you know, that's just me, you know, so I'm going to keep grinding. I'm going to keep making music. And if you love, you love what you do, you know, you, you know, you love what you do. If you're like putting in a bunch of hours doing it, if you, if you don't really love something, you'll, you'll know, just, you know, be honest with yourself. And, you know, that's it. Yeah. That's great advice, bro. I, I love what you said. Um, And you're right. Like not all, like people can make music as a passion too. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? It doesn't have to be their their whole thing or their whole identity. Yeah. I like how you really said that. But then there's also like I love how you also stated like if you really love something, you're gonna do it regardless. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Uh I really appreciate you coming on the podcast. Um Thanks anything yeah, no, I fuck with you and your music. Anything I could personally do to help you, um, you have my information. I'll I'll gladly uh give you my phone number. And I'll toss this interview to my team. Um, they'll edit it. We'll start your promotion this week and it'll come out next Friday. All right, but.